This question is definitely confusing, uh, but ultimately the best way to solve this is to memorize the ways that you can translate a graph. They're giving us pretty clear instructions about that and there are very quick adjustments that we can make to get the right answer. So I'm gonna show you that way first, it's definitely the fastest, but I'll also show you how we can use Desmos to kind of maybe second best our way to the answer if, uh, if need be. So uh, they're giving us this function f of x. The weird thing is that they've got this a, which is a constant, not a variable. So it's a number, but they didn't give us the number, but that doesn't really matter. What they're telling us is that f of x is translated three units down and four units to the right. So those are two separate movements. Now, in general, translations up and down are the easiest. Basically what happens is you, you just kind of add or subtract a number to the equation and, and it just you can just tack it on to the end. So in order to do the three units down, we would just subtract three away because we're moving in that direction. It's kind of just like sh changing every single point to be three less than what it was. So that move uh, I'll show in red here is just going to be to uh, subtract three from our equation. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, another version of this in a second once we do the uh, four units to the right, which is the harder part to kind of incorporate into the equation. Basically, shifts left and right are harder because instead of just adding something onto the end, we have to kind of incorporate it into the middle. We have to do basically a substitution. So in this case, in order to move it to the right, we're going to need to take all of our x's and convert them to an x minus 4. So one weird thing about this too is that the direction of the shift is kind of counterintuitive compared to the sign, right? We think of to the right meaning we're going to be more positive, right? So if you move any graph to the right, the numbers get bigger. So that should be a plus four, right? But no, the way that these kinds of things work uh, on the X, it's going to be a negative, even though yes, we are shifting to the right. So this is just something to memorize is that if you're going to the right, it's going to be a minus. If you're going to the left, it's going to be a plus. So uh, four units to the left, just to be clear, would be X plus four, but X minus four is going to shift to to the right and that needs to be substituted in for the x so if we wanted to do just a very quick version of the g of x graph it would basically look like this okay we would do g of x is equal to a minus 19 that's not going to change over and then here we would do the substitution x minus 4 so that's just going to go in place of x and then we'd still have that plus 5 i'll simplify this in a second and then the minus three, we just kind of add on to the end. So this is the kind of intermediate step where we're incorporating the translations, but we're not actually simplifying yet. In some cases, the X minus four is gonna require some extra work. Um, but in this case, since there's only one X, it's not really getting touched by any other uh, numbers or exponents or anything. It's just gonna stay put. So our final G of X graph is really just simplifying those N numbers. A minus 19 over X minus four plus two, which is uh, choice B. So that is the best way to get this, is just to know how these shifts work and be able to incorporate them into a graph. Then we don't need to worry about the A, which yeah, is weird, but not really that effective, that doesn't really affect the actual answer in any way. Now, if you were unsure about this, you wanted to check your answer, or you, you just had no clue, we could use Desmos in a clever way to, to figure this out. So here's what I did. I put our original expression, our f of x, into Desmos right there. So notice f of x equals a minus 19 over x plus five. Now it doesn't graph because the a for Desmos is a problem. We have three variables. We have the x, the f of x, which is kind of like y, and then this a where they're like, that's too many things, we can't graph that. But it does give us this option to add a slider. And so if I hit that button, it's gonna give me a value of a. And now it, I can adjust that value so I can move this slider and I'm gonna have you know the graph kind of shifting. In fact, let's shift it down a little bit. Um, and I can play with it, but I'm for now just gonna leave it as one. And we're gonna use this graph compared to the answer choices to kind of see if maybe the, the shift is, is there. So let's just go right to this next line and I'm gonna type in the G of X graph. So um, you can still go to the letters if you want, if you hit the ABC button, G of X. Oh, see, the one problem I have with the iPad is these buttons are way too small and I always miss hit things. And so we just gotta be really careful here. Um, so you've got uh, A minus 19, I'm gonna put that in parentheses because I can't really highlight. Uh, a minus 19, this is choice A, 
divided by x plus 4. Going nice and slow here. I'm sure it's very fun to watch. Um, and there we go. Let's change the color on this. Uh, how do I do that? There we go. Red. Okay. So you can see this red is choice A. And remember, we were supposed to shift this thing three units down and four units to the right. It's hard because we have a, a, a weird graph that doesn't have like easy landmarks, right? It's a, it's a double curve. If we had like a parabola where we could look at the vertex and see that move, this might be easier to just use our eyes for. But here I can still tell, like focusing on that like that bottom right curve of the purple, it's definitely looking like that, that curve moves down, but it looks like it's moving to the left. It's a leftward shift. And that would make sense because remember what I said, if we had X plus four, that would be a leftward shift. So that's what choice A is, is it's confusing those things. But now we have Desmos to kind of just with our eyes be able to see that it's the wrong direction. So if I compare that to the right answer, which would just be switching this X plus four for an X minus four, then we can see, yeah, it's it's still not like easy to count the boxes here because there's no clear landmarks, but it does look like the, the the purple to the red is a movement down and to the right. So that, that would probably be good, but we'd want to try the other choices as well. So if I tried, uh, so I would know in this case that A is wrong. If I tried choice C, we've got to make a couple of adjustments. First of all, or actually let's do choice D first since that's uh, got the minus four still. We have this become 22, and this would become 5. And again, we're looking at the purple to the red. It still, to me, looks like we are going, this is choice D, we are going down and to the right. So how would I know, right? Like, is this, is this potentially also an answer? Uh, obviously, if I, if I didn't know that B was right, I might be confused between these two. It does look like it's going down and right. One thing we might be able to do though to help us is because it's a slider, we can easily adjust the value of A. And you can see as I make it uh, bigger, it gets pointier. So we could maybe just kind of make it something really big. Oop, that's too big. Uh, and see if maybe there's like some pointiness to it. Okay, there we go. Now again, we're going purple to red. To me now, this purple to red shift looks like it's just moving right. It doesn't really look like it's moving down. So that might help me. Whereas again, if I go back to choice B, this would be 19, 19, and this would be plus two. There we go. Again, it looks like it's going down and to the right. So this is not obviously the best way to do it because it's not as certain as just knowing the rules but I do think that one of your strategies for the overall SAT is to get better at using Desmos when you're stuck or when you need to confirm something that you don't quite remember. You might be able to play with some of these features, especially this slider feature, to make more sense of things. And of course, the only reason we need the slider feature here is they deliberately didn't give us a complete equation for f of x. They gave this a as a constant instead of just like making it a number. And the whole reason they did that is to confuse you and I think to make it harder to graph. But because Desmos is so powerful, we can kind of outsmart the SAT and get past that little hurdle that they put for us and still get back to the place we really want to be, which is just seeing the movement of the graph on the XY plane. It's certainly nicer, but I recommend trying to memorize these rules because they do seem to come up a lot on the SAT.